Well, hello, everybody. Happy to be joining you today for that Thursday thing. Uh, we've had a couple of uh, missteps. I've had a couple of missteps uh, last time. Totally caught me unawares that uh, Thursday, April 1st was the first Thursday, right? I should have known that, but so I kind of got out of our first and third Thursday habit and I just posted a little uh, project instead of doing a Facebook Live. But I am back today with our third Thursday, that Thursday thing. And I'm hoping some folks will join me. I'm seeing some thumbs up and some eyeballs coming in. So today I thought that we would play a little bit with the Homestead collection and uh, see what we can come up with. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my inspiration in just a minute. I, I say this every time, but I'm always worried that nobody's going to join me. So it's, it's such a pleasure and a thrill to see everybody's names kind of filter up the screen and, uh, and join me for half an hour of just some creative fun. So I'm going to switch over the camera and talk a little bit about the beautiful Homestead collection. I've been enjoying working with it and I, I know that many of you have as well. And we're going to create a fun layout that takes inspiration from a number of sources. Now, you might have seen around Christmas time some gingerbread house uh, example layouts and our own Saccio on the Creative Memories blog just published a birdhouse layout the other day. So cute. And I'm going to take my inspiration from a house layout uh, that I saw online and it's actually, I think it's a workshop kit from another uh, paper manufacturer. And so you might recognize it, but I'm going to tweak it for using our Homestead collection and some of our beautiful tools. So let's have a look at the Homestead collection. I've been working with it for a while and as soon as I saw it, I really felt that farmhouse chic sort of vibe from it. And um, actually today I have a blog post up on the Creative Memory, uh, sorry, the Creative Scrapbooker magazine blog. And I use some of these to actually create kind of a little farmhouse decor uh, frame that I've got up in my little powder room. So I just love all of these really rustic colors uh, and textures and the floral and botanical patterns. And it just has that old farms, farmhouse homestead feel. So I thought this was a beautiful collection to create this sort of home style or homestead uh, layout today. Um, so we're going to be using, I, I wanted to show you everything, but and then I'll tell you what we're going to be using. We're not going to be using the mat cards as much as I love them. We're actually going to kind of make our own fun little title, but they are great. And I, I, I just love all the sayings that are on these ones. Beautiful colors, and this one especially. Isn't that lovely? I love that uh, black and white tile. And then of course the larger size ones, some of them have the half size journal boxes. There's some nice um, oval ones. Of course I won't be able to find those right now. Yeah, there's some of the nice oval ones. So I always get a package of the mats and I always get two packages of the stickers because again, three sheets of stickers I can, I can usually do, you know, five or six layouts with just the stickers that are provided, but because we have 12 sheets of paper in a pack, I need a little bit more. So usually I get two packs of the stickers, maybe one of the embellishments, and then one pack of the paper, and that gives me lots to work with. But these are so beautiful, and again, just really focused on home and family, you know, rustic, simple pleasures you know, gathering at the table, candles, you know, that lovely sort of shiplap, letterboard, hanging decor, the buffalo plaid. It's all beautiful. And then I really love these strands of wooden beads and the anemone flowers. They're just, they're just striking. So we're going to use some of those. And then the embellishments for this collection are just, oh, they're fabulous, right? Love that little house. Lots and lots of words. Let me flip that over. We're going to use some of those. I love these kind of already clustered embellishments. That better together is lovely. Uh, wooden corbels. You can use those as photo corners. Fantastic big clock face. There's all kinds of good stuff. 
So all of these embellishments are stunning and we're going to use some of the embellishments, some of the stickers and some of the paper. Okay, so let me just clear these up. And let's take a quick look at the papers before I move this. You've probably already seen them. If you are an avid CM scrapbooker, this was probably uh, you know in your cart the first day that it uh, that it was launched. But again, the beautiful anemone pattern. I always call this one the hero uh, floral because it's you know such a large, beautiful pattern that encompasses all of the colors in the collection. We've got a gray plaid on the back of that one. This is a really nice subtle textured pattern. Uh, I think probably made to uh, look like um, either a concrete or a stone and it's got a nice chevron on the back. I know that probably makes the camera go a little fuzzy. A little smaller anemone kind of on a wood grain background or weathered wood background. Shiplap and of course if you are a fixer upper fan you know all about shiplap and how people have gone crazy for adding shiplap in their homes. Wood grain, always a favorite. This leather is lovely. Like that is just so realistic looking. Looks like a, a worn leather sofa cushion to me. Just beautiful. There's that, uh, you know, kind of farmhouse bathroom tile. Very rustic. Penny tiles, I think they call them, or flower tiles. Just stunning with a uh, black plaid on the back. Another uh, tile pattern this one in kind of the green and blue and this one really reminds me of the pattern that you would find like on a tin panel like on uh, for a backsplash or a ceiling tin uh, tin roof ceiling or tin ceiling or tin roof pattern so just lovely and then we finish it off with some beautiful greenery on the back of that one so again all of those papers are just stunning and uh, you know good for so many different things but yeah, so we're going to create um, a really fun little layout. It's going to accommodate four photos. I've already got my photo spots ready here. I've just trimmed them down a little bit. So these are not four by six. They're three and a half by five and a half. And these ones are three and a half inch square. Okay, so we're going to get four photos on our paper. And then we're going to need some... Um, some different sizes, so I'll tell you all about the sizes here. I'm gonna use the shiplap as my background page. Now, I'm not going to take the time to, you know, gut it right now, but you'll see um, as we go along that you could go ahead and gut the center from this if you wanted to preserve some of your paper, okay? So we need the, a full-size sheet of paper for the background, cardstock or pattern paper. Then we're gonna need a five inch by 12 inch strip, okay? And this is going to be a little bit of a border or an anchor piece for us. Then we're gonna need an eight by eight, sorry, let me double check, sorry, nine. Nine by nine inch square. I tried it with an eight by eight and it was a little bit too small. So eight, uh, sorry, I tried it with an eight and it was a little too small, so nine by nine, okay? And then we're going to do some punching. Um, now I've already got a few borders punched out and I'll talk about those in a second. And then the last piece that we're going to need is a four by six. Okay, four by six. So you can use scraps. I mean, you can go ahead and uh, pull out the homestead collection and, you know, recreate these pieces exactly. But you can also go and find a lot of the, you know, a lot of your scraps will work for this. Okay. Now we're going to punch another, um, an, one more um, two inch punched edge or punched shape uh, here. Just so I can, again, I always like to describe how to use the border maker punch just in case you haven't used it. And I am using the cloud border maker cartridge. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and punch one more from this black plaid piece, okay? So again, with the cloud border punch or, or any of the border maker cartridges, you just slip it into the housing here and that basically becomes our punch. And then we open up the guide and the magnetic strip there. Insert our paper into the guide and snap that down that holds it nice and firm and then you can see that the guide folds back and out of the way. So now we can use this punch 
on the edge of the paper that is free. And the little teeth on the border maker cartridge just slip right into the notches on the back of the border maker guide. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and slide that in. You'll feel um, the punch kind of grip and bite, and then we just go ahead and punch. Move it up and you'll feel it grip into the next section, and we just keep going. So I love the border maker cartridges and border maker system because it doesn't take up a lot of room and I have so many different options. There's new cartridges coming out all the time and I know that there was supposed to be a fantastic, oh, sorry, that was a bit loud. <laughs> there was supposed to be a fantastic barbed wire chain cartridge that was coming out with the Homestead collection. That has been delayed, it will be coming but it has been delayed in shipping, so we can expect that soon. But for this, the, the cloud works really well. And the other cartridge uh, that we currently have that would work as well would be the, um, the bridge, the bridge cartridge. And as you'll see in a couple of minutes, you might have some other cartridges that will work. This is a really old one. This was a scalloped edge um, border maker cartridge. And you could also, if you didn't have the border maker system, you could use a standalone border punch. So this is a current one and this is an older one. But again, when you see how we're going to use these strips in just a minute, you probably will be able to tell, oops, you probably be able to tell from your stash what will work, okay? So I'm just gonna cut all of these strips down to about two inches. Set that aside. <clears throat> and then all of these strips together are going to make up the shingles of our little house. Okay, so we're going to just stack them up. We're going to adhere them together. Okay, and I think I kind of like that because I've got the darkest at the bottom, a little bit of a contrast with the brown, and then the lighter grays at the top. So you're going to create kind of this stack of border maker strips or border strips and again i mean you could turn them over so that you know the um so that the clouds don't line up they could be offset or you could keep them all together so that they do line up exactly it's your choice okay i'm going to uh just leave them as is and i'm just going to assemble this all just so, you know, about an inch of each of the strips of paper will show. So just adhering a little bit up the top here, just regular tape runner adhesive. And one more. Okay, so even though all of our strips were two inches each, we're only going to see about one inch of each of the layers. And we want this to be, you know, maybe about three and a half inches. So this is four inches right now. So I'm just going to slice it down just by a half an inch. Just take a half an inch off the top there. Okay, just so that it's about, you know, three and a half inches. And right now it's 12 inches long. So now we're just gonna take one inch off the side. So you could do this with, um, as I said, a lot of different types of punches, but basically you're going to want your roof, so to speak, to be about 11 inches wide by about three and a half to four inches tall. And you can adjust it as you go. Okay, so that's going to be our roof. And I think you can see that kind of gives us the effect of, you know, some shingles. I'm going to take my um, zero centering ruler and just mark about an inch. I'm going to mark an inch and a half in actually from each side. So you can do that a couple of ways. You can actually put the zero along the side and then just mark one and a half inches. Okay, so that would be there. Or you can actually center it and then you, you actually get, you know, save yourself a little bit of time, okay? But I'm just going to mark one and a half inches in. 
from each side. Now we're going to cut our roof line. So I'm going to take the pencil mark that I made at one and a half inches in, put it, you know, just anywhere along my cutting line. And then I want the opposite bottom corner of my shingles on the line as well. So I did try this with a 45 degree cut, but it was too angled. So basically, again, just marking in an inch and a half from the end, that gives you a nice roof line or a slope without being too, too um, drastic. Okay, so again, there's my one and a half inch mark and I'm lining up the bottom with the cutting line. Okay, so that is going to be my little shingled roof. And I think you might get a sense of how this is all going to come together now. So we've got our background. We've got our five and a half inch, or sorry, five inch by 12 inch strip. This is going to be the body of our house and we're gonna put it about a half an inch up from the bottom. You can center it on your page. And then we're gonna to top it with our cute little roof, okay? So that's the basis. That's the basic idea there. Uh, but let me show you what I'm gonna add in just to make this a little bit more uh, interesting and just a little bit more kind of full, okay? So first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and add my, or adhere my five inch strip. just right to the very bottom. Sorry, my hand slipped. Okay, and then I actually had just in, I keep all of my scraps from the collections together. So I actually had a piece, it's not quite two inches of the green. So I decided that I would like to put that green just kind of as an extra. Let me get another tape runner here. Uh, just as a little bit of an extra in, you know, piece of interest sort of thing. And I'm going to also add some border stickers. There we go. Keep on keeping on here. Yeah, so I'm just going to add this. And, you know, I think it just kind of looks like, you know, maybe the grass in front of a house. And then let's get some of our... Some of our embellishments. So I'm gonna use one of the sticker packs I already have open here. Where's my borders? Okay, and I think I'm going to put a row of the anemone borders just across the bottom. That might be the, you know, the flowers that I have outside my front door. Then I can put my house back on and again I, I mentioned about about a half an inch up from the bottom edge that will leave enough room for the roof and um you know about a half an inch at the top as well so about a half an inch just center it I feel like this paper yeah I think this paper might have got wet on my table somehow because it's a bit my background paper is a bit crinkly and wrinkly and it's throwing me off. There we go. Okay, and I'm just gonna adhere this at the top and I'll show you why in a second. So about, again, about an inch down. Okay. Now, the other thing I thought I would do, and I actually had already cut this border in half for another project. So I'm actually just going to kind of add some little pieces here. And I don't know if you can see, but on because of the background of these stickers being the shiplap, it actually has some little lines. So that's really actually kind of a good thing because it lets me really sort of line things up. So yeah, I'm not using a whole border and I could have done the same thing with the anemone, but I'm just, um, just using some a piece that I had already cut for something else that didn't quite work. And I'm just gonna tuck that in behind. So two border stickers just adds to that background. OK. 
Okay. All right. So that's my background. So I mentioned to you that we can fit four photos on this layout. So one three by five and one three by five over here. And I think those kind of look like, you know, little, little house windows. And then a three and a half by five and a half would go over on this side. So that's, you know, you could just leave it like that, put your title in there, and that would be really cute. But remember that I said that we were going to need a four by six, because we're gonna put a little door on our house with the peekaboo pockets. So you're going to want one of the uh, four by six peekaboo pockets that opens on the long edge. So when you have your your package of peekaboo pockets, you get two styles. And I hope you're going to be able to see this. So one will open along the long edge and one will open along the short edge. And of course, you can put you can use either one in lots of different um lots of different projects, but because we want this to open like a door, we want to be able to adhere that long edge and uh, open it to the side, okay? So we are going to put one of our photos on the back side of our door, which is our four by six inch piece, okay? And then that's going to go inside our peekaboo pocket. And the idea being that it's going to cover the front door of the little house. So let's go ahead and adhere. Um, you could do these fo little photo mats in any color, or you don't even have to do photo mats if you don't want to. And that's why I just left this kind of just adhered at the top so that you could get your photo uh, kind of tucked under the eaves of the roof. Okay. So there's my two windows, window photos, and there's my door. And again, it's cute. It, it's cute just as it is. Okay. But let's go ahead and decorate our front door here with our title and then, um, you know, see what else we need to do to embellish this. So I was showing you a variety of different uh, embellishments here. And I kind of thought to myself that we would have some kind of, you know, circular embellishment, almost like a wreath. Uh, so if that's the case, maybe actually we'll use the wreath. And then maybe this idea of home. So let's go ahead and do that. Now this is really tiny, but if you want this to pop up just a bit, my tip is always to cut your foam squares uh, while they're on the backing. Let me get my micro tip scissors here. So I just cut my little tiny foam squares into about three slim pieces. Usually they don't pop off like that. Let's try another one. There we go. And then that way I've got some skinny strips that I could use for this. Now it's a bit fiddly, but it's definitely worth it to get that little bit of a shadow. And even though this might go inside a uh, peekaboo pocket, uh, you'll still get that effect of a shadow. It won't, it won't press it down too, too much. Uh, and you'll get the effect of a shadow underneath it, okay? So let's see how we do here. I might put a couple more on afterwards just for security. But you could also put a little window on your front door. You could make uh, little strips of wood, you know, to make it into kind of a, uh, again, a more of a farmhouse type of door. You could do all sorts of things to sort of decorate it up, okay? But so this is the idea. Jeez, now they're coming off on my fingers. There we go, okay? So it might just look like that. Maybe put some extra things on it, not sure yet. You could add your journaling right on a little slip below this as well. Slip that inside. It's 
being obstreperous here. There we go. Okay. And then obviously we're going to finish off a couple of embellishments, but once you put this into your page protector, then you can adhere the door right over top on the outside. And then when you open it, you'll have all four of your photos. Uh, and you know what would be cute too? I don't know if I have, I don't think I have my little hole punch. My other my other thing of tools is off, uh, off to the side there. But you know, you could add a little door handle there too, you know, maybe punch it from um, the same wood grain or something like that, okay? But yeah, I think that would be fun because then you've got a homey sort of layout um, with four photos on one page. So that would be awesome. And then you could use, definitely use, you know, the, uh, the little anemone, you know, make a little cluster down here. Hang on. You know, something like that. Um, and if you didn't want to do this, you could, of course you know, uh, create your title um, right in here. You know, maybe you're going to say something like happy home or maybe you wanted to use, you know, welcome, welcome to our beautiful chaos, you know. So there's lots of different things you could use. This one might be a little bit too big. That's not bad, though. And that one's a nice one. Um, and the other one that's nice is, you know, together is the best place to be. So you can make a little cluster there, maybe a cluster at both of the um, corners of the house. You know, maybe this is hanging from the side or something, or maybe this is hanging on the door, you know, below the wreath, basically like a little front door. Maybe that's like the little flag uh, outside the front door. So you've got lots and lots of different choices, of course, when it comes to um, your embellishments. But yeah, I thought that would be a fun little uh, page where, again, you get the effect of a house, but you would definitely, you know, be able to get more than just, uh, you know, a single photo on the page. So I like the idea of the door, but I think it also works even just as is. Okay. So now you know what I mean by when I say that you could use a variety of different punches for your roof. Basically, if you have some kind of scallop or, uh, you know, shaped edge, you could substitute any of those types of punches um, for the top of your roof, for your shingles, basically. Okay. And then again, so you're going to make uh, your entire roof. And you know what? You could do it with a do it you know with just a flat piece of paper of course I just grabbed this scrap here but you could just do it with one edge so you could punch you know just a uh, one edge from a solid piece of paper and trim it again one and a half inches in and then make your your angled cut basically right so you could do it from a solid piece of paper or you could do it from a stacked piece. It's not quite right, but you get the idea. So you could have a solid roof or you could have that layered roof. Okay. So I will be sure to kind of finish this up, uh, adhere everything together and uh, post my, my finished layout a little bit later for you. Uh, yeah, lots and lots of uh, questions, not questions, lots and lots of suggestions coming in here. Yeah, Janet saying use the grass BMC to make a thatched roof for an old English cottage. Wouldn't that be so cute, right? Love that idea. Uh, this would make a cute title page for sure, for sure. And I know that a lot of the times, you know, we make these kind of... Um, you know, more decorative or fanciful, whimsical sort of pages for titles. But that's why I really wanted to figure out a way to get, you know, several photos on this too, just in case you wanted to use it as a regular page. I think something like this would be great, you know, for documenting like, uh, you know, welcome to our new home or, you know, places that I've lived or just, you know, photos of, you know, uh, your current home, because Lord only knows we are staying at home so much more. Uh, home is our safe and uh, our safe place to be. So, you know, a lot of us have put some extra time and effort into our home. So it might be documenting something like that. Okay. Um, yeah. And I think I saw a couple of other um, 
comments scroll by, you know, with people suggesting different tools that would work as well. But again, anything that would have, you know, that scalloped sort of edge or a decorative edge. You don't want to use a chain. You don't want to make chains. You want to be able to just have the decorative edge punches. But you probably have something in your stash that you can use. And I know that you've got some other fabulous collections that you might want to use up. I did see something somebody mentioned, you know, using the brick uh, background um, paper from Keep the Faith. That would be a fantastic house. If you live in a brick house with a black mansard roof, you could recreate your own house uh, very easily, you know, with some of the papers and things. The old stone and wood grain um, paper packs would be beautiful for stuff like this. Our new Shiplap Advisor exclusive paper pack would work beautifully for something like this. So it's there's so many, you know, different things that you could do. You could use the log pattern from the spring cottage and make your little, you know, your little cabin or cottage in the woods with it lots and lots of different things. So I hope you liked that and I hope you give that a try. Um, I will also be posting the link to the uh, Creative Scrapbooker Magazine blog post that has the cute little frame featuring some of the, you know, these beautiful, uh, thick, heavy, laser cut uh, embellishments from the Homestead Collection because they're just lovely to work with and they're nice and thick and sturdy so you can do you know really really cute craft projects with them. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today and we will see you around the internet of course on an ongoing basis but we'll see you back for our next uh, That Thursday thing on the first Thursday of May. All right guys thanks again for joining me. Bye for now.